So welcome everyone again. My name is Oscar Ramirez. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Startup Commons. So today we have one of those uh, guest speakers that usually makes a difference due to his extensive journey as an entrepreneur that after uh, experiencing the benefits and all mistakes as an entrepreneur, both in first person and in others, he has now decided to, to put all his experience, learning and knowledge at the service of entrepreneurs on their way to success. So 20 years of awesome wins, big failures and lessons learned through his own ventures, investing, selling, uh, growing and supporting businesses of all size from well-known international brands to the earliest of the startups. So these experiences from the launch of the Entrepreneur Roadmap, an online uh, do-it-yourself tool suite for entrepreneurs and, and mentors. Colin Christensen, my friend, welcome to the Startup Commons webinar series. And thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. Thanks, Oscar. I really appreciate it. Uh, this is uh, quite an honor and quite an encouragement and uh, great introduction. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try to do my best. Thank you. Yeah, well, I kind of look at that and go, wow, I like the sounds of that guy. I got to talk with him someday. <laughs> it, it sounded really good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks. Uh, so you want me to just jump into the slide deck and go from there? Yes, it's all yours. So go ahead, please. All right. I'm going to share my screen and uh, away we go. Uh, so, for starters, thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us and uh, allowing me to talk a little bit about uh, entrepreneurship and um, my journey a little bit to a degree, but also, more importantly, how it interfaces, how the entrepreneur journey interfaces with um, the ecosystems around the world. And so, that's really what I want to talk about today. Uh, we'll start off with a little bit about me, just uh, for you know, some fun and folly and some entertainment maybe. Uh, this is my family. I've got uh, three amazing teens and I, I got the opportunity to marry my best friend, uh, my wife who we're now 21, almost coming up 22 years now in marriage. And um, I've really been around business my whole life. I, I, I build businesses to solve problems. Uh, I love solving problems. The, the idea of building something to uh, make somebody's life better or something better in the world is, has always been a fascination for me. My parents uh, had some entrepreneur ventures years ago, and, and I've built a number of businesses over the years. Like uh, Oscar said, some have won, some have faded, some have sold, some have you know left large smoking craters. Uh, but uh, I'm still building and I'm still growing and I'm still learning things. And for me, I'm fascinated by the, the whole why. Uh, why do some succeed and why do some not? And um, for me, years and years ago, probably about 20 years ago, I started the business Think. And um, it, it kind of became a consulting company to go out and help businesses and work with leadership teams and help them to hire and do all kinds of things, mentoring, et cetera. And then from there, I, I started putting together some plans because I had done so much mentoring with entrepreneurs over the years. Uh, it, it was really interesting. And so I kind of put this map together of because I asked the same questions, always asking the same questions, always getting the same blank stares from the entrepreneurs and always uh, giving the same kind of homework. And so I ended up mapping that out into a format called the Entrepreneur Roadmap. And then uh, that kind of filled the gap from the early stage guys that do it yourself, kind of uh, build it on your own, then I was missing something in the middle for those people that were scaling and, and really rapidly moving up in the world and building their business. And so that's why we developed uh, Fuse 42. And so Fuse 42 is an accelerator. We'll talk a little bit about that as we go on. But uh, so we have Think started as a consulting company that kind of services the large, larger scale clients and leadership teams. We have Fuse 42 dealing with the scaling and rapidly growing companies uh, as an accelerator. And then the entrepreneur roadmap is that early stage uh, kind of get up and going thing uh, to help the entrepreneurs kind of work out and build their DNA. Then I have two other logos on there. One is uh, evolution building materials. So a few years ago, I started seeing the problem talking with a bunch of people actually getting involved in the hemp industry and, and found out that um, drywall is really heavy. I mean, I, if you've worked with it, it's really heavy. So I built a, a company that is solving the problem of lightweight drywall that's fireproof and moldproof, and that's what Evolution is. Uh, we're going through uh, our whole development there. We have a patent pending, and I've got a team of guys kind of working on that. 
And then uh, more recently, we started getting into some solar opportunities. And so we started a project uh, with one of the guys on this, uh, the call today. And we started a project called uh, uh, Alberta Solar Advantage. And so we're looking at building solar farms and helping with renewable energy. These are just all these things that I get up to and, and working on things. But for me, the center of everything I do and what I try to do each and every day comes down to uh, ending needless failure in entrepreneurs uh, everywhere in the world if I can. So uh, there's a lot of failure in there in, in being an entrepreneur. And if we can kind of reduce it and turn it into something a little bit easier, a little bit more uh, intuitive, that would be fantastic. And so that's my journey. So ecosystems are amazing. And uh, to me, Startup Commons is actually one of the most amazing groups that I've seen. They, they have an incredible framework for uh, building, you know, kind of common language and common tools around the entrepreneur. And so uh, for anybody who's working in the ecosystem, thank you. Like, thank you. I mean, I probably wouldn't get to where I was as an entrepreneur if I didn't have the people around me and the people that are out there uh, creating services and, and products and, and tools for the ecosystem. This is means the world to all of us. And I, I just want to say thank you for that. But there's really hundreds of stages of business and hundreds of different things going on, uh, different stages of innovation. And then there's, of course, different ways that an entrepreneur can learn and all these different parts that they have to figure out. Uh, we need connective tissue and structure and there's service providers and common language needed. Uh, several different roles throughout all these different parts. And uh, uh, it, the journey is very convoluted for entrepreneurs in general. And then really when it comes down to it, you know, as, as hard as it is, there's all these different service providers putting it all together. What we really need is some common things around the entrepreneur. And uh, these are, a lot of these tools were directly from Startup Commons. And, and, and when you look at the entrepreneur, and that's where my focus is, is really focusing in on the entrepreneur. There's so many different elements to what an entrepreneur is. You know, uh, in my city, in Edmonton, Alberta, uh, a lot of focus is on just technology entrepreneurs. And, and I'm like, no, no, not just technology, but innovation. But then there's also entrepreneurs that work out of their basement and are just trying to create $500 a month for you know, revenue. There's nothing wrong with that either, but they need help and support, right? So how do we help and create something for all of these different types of entrepreneurs and all these different versions and all these different uh, roles and, and, and Startup Commons, like I said, has created a framework that is beautiful around the way that it all works together. For me, the one thing I find kind of missing, and I'm not, this isn't a critique, it's just something I'm noticing, and maybe it's just the, the view that I'm looking at the world through, is we really need something more specific for the entrepreneur, right? Something that we can figure out and quickly evaluate where they're at, uh, help them to develop a, a recurring DNA, something that will help them over and over and over again all in their journey um, and, and really to grow to become the entrepreneurs that they can be to help themselves, the community, their, uh, everybody around them. And also a way to kind of comprehensively navigate that crazy, all those different organizations and all the different tools and all the different things that are out there. And so that's where I'm kind of coming from. So here's the big problem for me when it comes to entrepreneurship in general. Right, especially right now, uh, COVID, you know, is kind of creating a lot of tr problems. In Canada alone, you can see a massive drop in um, in uh, employment. So, uh, and around the world, we're looking at, you know, some people are averaging upwards of maybe 25 million people out of work around the world because of uh, COVID and the different situations that are going on. And then, if you look at Gem, uh, uh, the global uh, entrepreneur, you know. I forget what that stands for, actually. That's kind of dumb of me. But uh, if you look over the last 20 years, entrepreneurship in general in almost every country in the world has been growing. And so we have these kind of things starting to coincide. You've got growth in entrepreneurship. You've got jobs dropping off like flies. And you've got all these people with innovation and, and creative ideas that need to come to the forefront and start figuring things out. So the problem is not, you know, whether people can start a business because, Right now, people are having to start businesses more than ever out of necessity. So what can we do to try to help them to build uh, you know, something intuitive? Because most of the time, entrepreneurship is not intuitive. You don't just wake up and go, hey, I'm gonna start a business. And so, um, and the way I describe it, actually, I, I heard a story once, somebody described it, I think it was on a podcast I heard, and they described entrepreneurship like this. It's like you're walking down a street 
you know, you've chosen a street to walk down, and which is your business, and all of a sudden, you just, out of the blue, you don't even see it coming, you fall into a big hole. <laughs> and that big hole is black, and it's dark, and it's scary, and there's nothing around. You can't find your way. You don't even know where the edges are, and you, you're trying to find a light or a ladder or, you know, there's anything to help you, and it's just, it's, it's kind of scary and freakish, and you don't know what to do, and eventually, you fumble around, and you find a little, you know, flashlight or a big lighter, and you start finding a little bit of light and then you find a ladder and you slowly clumber your way out of the, the hole and, and, and only to walk another 20 feet and fall into another hole. <laughs> At that point, you know, you, you start to get a little bit more awareness of, okay, I know there's a light in here somewhere. I know there's a ladder in here somewhere. I know there's some food in here somewhere. And you start to get more used to the uncomfortable uh, uncomfortability of being in that hole and and you get better at it but some people the problem i find is you know on their own most people will fall in that hole 90 percent of the time right you're, you're gonna fail 90 percent of the time and that's not necessarily a bad thing it just means you have to move and you can if you can do it cheap and inexpensive and quickly then you can kind of pick yourself up and clean yourself off and get to the next one right the bigger problem i find is that 77 percent or more never try again so you've got these entrepreneurs that are going out and driving their head straight into a wall and failing and then instead of kind of trying again which they should because they've learned some lessons now on how to get out of that hole they give up completely and i don't blame them i mean if you've been through business it's it's life-sucking it's challenging it's it's crazy at times but the ones that stick to it and try it again and get back on the horse and do better, they have better chances of success. And so if we can take the lessons learned from those guys that have been through business for years and bring it back to these people, now there's two things that have to happen. One, we have to teach the lessons and two, they have to be willing to learn them, <laughs> right? That's still a very difficult thing to get. But if we can, if we had a way of doing that and ecosystems are good for kind of creating that environment, We've been able to successfully turn success, or sorry, uh, turn business success from 90% failure into about 70% success rate. And this is pretty common. This is not something that we're not rocket surgeons doing anything new, but being able to have this success and reduce the amount of zombies, particularly, and the amount of failures, then that's a good thing. And we want to do more of that. And so the whole point to what I'm trying to talk about today is how do we help as an ecosystem, how do we help entrepreneurs build tractionable, investable businesses. Even if the business never necessarily scales, which would be more investable, it's something that they're investing their time into and they feel good about investing their time into, but it's also got traction. It's able to move forward, whether it's $500 a month or $5 million a month. It doesn't really matter if we can help them to grow it and get that DNA set, then we're off to the races in a good way. So if we're gonna create a solution like this, in my mind, it has to be inexpensive. Most of the entrepreneurs I know, especially startup entrepreneurs, they're not wealthy. It's got to be ubiquitous, available anytime, anywhere. It's got to be able to be done on their own. Like, uh, you know, as much as I want to sit down and help entrepreneurs, there's no possible way one person or even 100,000 people can help millions of entrepreneurs around the world. So we need to have something that can be done on their own. It has to be principle based so it's not focused on any particular industry or vertical or uh, uh, type of business but it has to be able to work for any type of business also has to be endlessly deep so in my mind it has to be able to kind of take them through a quick journey and then hand them off to other levels of the ecosystem to grow and become more mature and then the big thing for me as well is it has to be sticky right entrepreneurs are unfocused <laughs> let's call it that maybe they're really really focused but they're not always the one to put up their hand and say i need help and so it has to be something that's sticky that will work for them that they in, engages their interest engages their time and wants them to keep kind of keep growing and so uh years ago i developed this model called the entrepreneur roadmap and and what it is and it's it's kind of gone through changes and edits along the way but it's basically just the dna the basic dna for any entrepreneur that they should know now, one thing that differentiates this from a lot of different ones is I start with the entrepreneur, the head of the entrepreneur. So working on step one is all about how do we help the entrepreneur to be healthy, get balanced and be productive and know how to, what they're looking for in life. You know, we know lots of entrepreneurs that choose the wrong business and then they're miserable because they've chosen something that's, you know, they, they're tied to for all of eternity when they should have just started something small in their basement, right? So you've got to balance that out first. 
And then to get to know your, uh, your customers is very important. Uh, we know that uh, working with entrepreneurs, they don't know that all the time. Even mature companies don't always know that. And so understanding that, managing your money, mapping out a plan, building your team, building in process and duplication, and then eventually delegate and improve. I've developed this as a lemniscate, you know, uh, an infinity loop because we're never done, right? Once we get all the way to here, then we roll back around and go all the way back to step one and keep working on ourselves, keep working on uh, knowing our customers better, our finances better, our map, our plans better, our team better, et cetera. So it's a, 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 an infinity loop to help us keep going. To me, creating this environment right now in this time, we're about to see the rise of the entrepreneur. Right, uh, we've been watching that for years. Entrepreneurship has been growing, but now let's see if we can actually create it so that anybody, everybody, could go out and actually be an entrepreneur. And that's what I'm trying to create. So I'm going to show you a little bit about what it is, how it works, and then kind of uh, go into Q and A after that. But so here's a, a quick matrix of some of the skills. So we have skills for you know the entrepreneur themselves, skills for their market, for their plan, for their people and their process. This is just kind of a quick matrix of a whole bunch of the tools that are available. And some of them are really, really good for any size business. I use these in my, uh, uh, in my consulting business with $20 million clients, and I use them with brand new startups. And I've tried to keep the language very, very simple so that anybody can access it. Um, I love the, uh, the Lean Canvas, the Model Canvas. There's nothing wrong with it. It's a great tool, but even for a startup entrepreneur, it's intimidating. So I've tried to create language that is very, very simple and easy and accessible for them to get to that point where they can actually fill in a, uh, a lean model canvas and understand it. But at the same time, it also is mature enough in a lot of places for uh, uh, more mature entrepreneurs to use it. So to me, this is the way I define the entrepreneur roadmap. It's a do-it-yourself journey to build their repeatable and entrepreneurial DNA, that, that core set of skills and tools that they have in their body, in their mind, in their heart, so that they can go over and over and over again and do more and more as they go. Uh, it's a mentoring framework to support them. And so in other words, if you imagine um, a, a prescription-based system with a doctor, a doctor kind of listens to you, they triage you, they understand what your problem is, you can send them back in and they learn what they need, and you know, you send them with a prescription, they go and take the prescription for a while, you come back and you check on them, make sure they're doing okay, and you keep going. And then it's also a way to plug them into the rest of the ecosystem, so that they can learn and grow and uh, be more mature. Okay, so this is how it would kind of work. You have entrepreneurs coming in the front end, and we ask them some quick classifying questions to understand where they're at in their business. Uh, we do have a suite of assessments that they can take, so everything from personality and grit per, uh, tools, as well as there's hundreds of others that we could plug them into. Uh, I've been introduced to some great tools for a friend that's on here today as well. Fantastic tools for entrepreneurs, and uh, those are great things to plug them into. But then also, just give them a couple of quick tips. Here's, if you only have 10 minutes, here's what you need to know right now. So that's the quick tips, right? What can you do? This is what you need to know so that I can keep you engaged and get you going deeper. And then you get into the whole entrepreneur roadmap. And so we have, you know, entrepreneur health, uh, we have tools uh, for getting clients, we have, you know, uh, for financials, of course, for planning and all those things. But then what we would do is we'd plug it into the ecosystem and all those map service providers, extra tools and specialists, they could be blocked into these groups so that they, uh, when they're done the tools that we provide for them, they can launch right into uh, another suite of tools inside the ecosystem. Somebody that's providing deeper tools on SEO or uh, accounting or anything like that. So um, then what they do, and so here's a quick example. I'm actually gonna show you my website in a second, but just to give you an overview of what it's doing. They come in, they uh, land on a landing page. We ask them what stage they're at in their business, basically what size of business they're trying to uh, work with, and then uh, some different tools. And so it gets complicated fairly quickly, but the tools uh, actually help them through uh, working through some of these things and the quick tips are just that immediate thing that they can learn to, uh, to understand if they need to. So here's my website very quickly. You typically just go start here. You know, we ask them a couple of quick questions. What stage are they at? And by the way, you know, a couple of things. One, I don't know everything for sure. And this is my M MVP, my, you know, uh, uh, initial valuable product or, uh, 
uh, minimum viable product. Wow, forgetting a lot of my terms today. This is my minimum viable product. So this is something we're actually converting the whole thing over to uh, more of an app and more of a, 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 a you know handheld or a uh, easy to do anywhere with your thumbs kind of thing. But for now, I'm just showing the guidance on it through uh, the website. So just starting, established, passing the torch. Let's say they're just starting in business, just getting going, and we want to give them some of the quick tips. So we ask them, okay, where are you at? Are you just building, you know, no employees and very little investment needed? There's a very particular set of skills that they need to know for that. Obviously, there's a lot more skills if you're going to build, you know, more, more employees, more investment, maybe a location. There's more things that they have to understand about that. And if they're going to try to take over the world, they need to probably get a lot of investment, a lot of employees, and a lot of location stuff all very complex in what they're doing. And so even if they're just starting on a world domination thing, we know that business is not intuitive. So we give them a couple of quick tips, you know, some basic things that they need to know, who's their customers, what is their solution, uh, you know, re what regulatory things do they have to understand, and uh, how do you go and make a sale to somebody right away, and if you're gonna need investment, what do you do? So then we get into self-assessments, which I'll take you to quickly. So we do a couple of quick assessments here, and we have tools for the entrepreneur to assess themselves, the leadership team, the business maturity model, uh, employees if they have them, and maybe an overall checkup for a company that's a little bit more mature. And then um, they would get into the entrepreneur roadmap. And so it's, again, there's that suite of tools and the map. And literally you just click on any of these to figure out where you're at. But let's click, I need help with my team. So I'm gonna build on, uh, you know, build my team. We have a whole bunch of tools in here that are designed for helping them. So how to get team alignment, how do you evaluate people, how do you assess them? Uh, uh, like how do you see if they're a good fit for the team? How do you assess them where they're at, what their puzzle piece is for the company? What kind of meetings you should have? Uh, what, here's an agenda for a meeting, a whole suite of tools on hiring and, and making sure they get the right things and then evaluating the leadership team. I give them some extra tools in here for reading. And then uh, this is where they could launch off into getting service providers and other tools and other parts of the ecosystem right in here. So for example, um, if you go into step two, I'll just give you an example. So here you go, featured specialists. We have a couple of specialists in here in my regional area that uh, you can go and learn from that would help you take the business, your business to the next level. Okay, so that's kind of an example of how it works. And then let's talk about mentoring for a second. So any time that an entrepreneur enters the ecosystem or gets a loan or is asking for money, because that's usually the first place a lot of them start, <laughs> I need money. Yeah. What do you need it for? Well, I don't know yet, but I need money so I can figure it out. It's like, okay, well, that's not going to work. So, uh, so a navigator might be an important role to have and they start here and they would have a meeting with them and they'd understand, get to know the entrepreneur and then they'd identify what they're short on. Maybe they're uh, not, they need a lot more understanding of the market. So you'd assign them some homework. And so the homework would come in the form of go do step two, or go do this tool in step two and then get back to me. So they, they go and do the homework. They send the homework back within 48 hours or 48 hours before the meeting. The navigator would review the homework. Are they ready for the next step? No, you go do it again. If they are ready, then you might give them the loan or get them assigned to a mentor or whatever. Then the mentor and them meet together. Again, they go through the same thing. The mentor gets to know them. Uh, each meeting, they're identifying shortcomings. What's the next step? They give them some homework, the entrepreneur does the homework, and that keeps going for however long the program term might be, and then they keep reviewing the homework and meeting together, and eventually maybe they go off, they finish with the loan term, and they go on, but we want to keep them having a whole suite of tools to do this. And so I've done that, and, and here, if you want, here's a little mentoring tool for you. You can click on that QR code, uh, take a picture of that QR code. I think you'll probably have the slide deck later anyway. Uh, but I'll show you a little bit about what it looks like. And so uh, the men this is one of the mentoring tools. This is just a Google Forms thing. Like I said, it's an MVP. It's barely enough to, to get by, but it gives the access to what we, I'm trying to get it to do. So I have a page on my site called uh, Mentoring, and you can go through here. It gives you a little bit of an idea, and you can click on a framework, and it would take you to uh, a Google Form that just walks them through um, a, an emailing system for, uh, you know, that to, they can track the progress and keep up on this person. You know, what are you gonna name this team? And, uh, you know, a couple of quick assessment tools. Uh, okay, what's the personality style? You know, um, 
again, okay, so what are the top immediate challenges, the biggest immediate challenge? You know, you can fill it in and, and, and then you get some prescriptions. So here's the rough outline of all the prescription tools that you would use. What homework do you give them? When do you want them to get back to, or when do you uh, set up a next appointment? When do you uh, expect them to get the homework back? Did they complete it? Did they get it done on time? What was the quality in it? They totally mailed it in. They didn't do a good work on that. What are you going to discuss with them next time? What do you want to see for the out team, out of the team and do this? And then what happens is this gets emailed to you and you get a record of uh, that everything that you covered off with that entrepreneur. Now this is again me, I, I can develop all this and I'm getting it developed into tools, but for now it's just a, uh, the, a way for me to be able to capture everything we need. Okay, quick overview of some of the tools. Like I said, we have uh, tools that assess the entrepreneur. If we're gonna figure out where they need help, we need to understand where they're at. And so uh, as a, an accelerator, we work with multiple teams and we're always trying to pick the winners. That's what we do as an accelerator, right? If our investors are going to win with these companies, we wanna make sure that the investors uh, have the best teams to select from and see the best teams. Y Combinator, Techstars, CDL, 500 startups, you name them. There's hundreds of uh, 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 accelerators out there. Ours is called Fuse42. We're specifically focused on the hemp and cannabis space in Canada, being a legal nation for uh, cannabis. And the hemp, we have some of the best growing cycles in the world, hence the, uh, uh, the solar uh, arrays that we're putting up. But we have some great things going on in Alberta. So Fuse42 becomes a really good attraction engine for entrepreneurs all around the world. But we have to assess them. And so these are some of the tools that we use to assess them. Where are they at as an entrepreneur? How do they fit? Are they more of a salesperson? Are they more of a, um, a technology person? Are they more of a leader? Are they more in culture? I mean, you know, where do they fit? Are they mentors? What, what do they need for a mentor? All those kind of things. And then the leadership team, what is the leadership team makeup? Uh, do they have all the roles that they would need? Or is there somebody, do they, are they aware that they need all these people in each role? And what does that makeup look like? And then also, how long have they been together? How well do they work together? How much success have they had as a team? And so evaluating each leader and then evaluating the team as a whole. And it actually becomes very difficult to get a good score. Uh, but that's reality, right? I mean, how many businesses succeed? Well, not enough. And so that's a reality that we have to deal with, but at least we know. And then as well, we have a map, uh, a little bit like the Goldman model. Uh, we look at this and say, uh, what's the maturity of the entrepreneur? A team maturity, the solution maturity, their financial maturity, and their business maturity. And so we can talk a little bit about that. You'd get kind of a little bit of a graph like this. This is what we're always looking for. And so anybody out there that's interested in this, uh, talk to me further. Uh, we need strategic investors to continue to grow what we're doing. We're on track, we're growing, we're doing all the things we need to do. And like I said, I've got lots of creativity to, to make stuff up as we go that is meeting needs and working. But uh, we also need mentor groups. You know, we have a framework for mentoring and uh, you know, there's some very good ones out there. VMS here locally is, and internationally is a great program. Uh, I've created one that's specific to this model. And that's, uh, so we're always looking for great mentoring groups that need a framework. And then ecosystems, uh, like maybe all of you guys, certainly like Startup Commons, that has all these tools and all these uh, roles and all these uh, support systems for entrepreneurs, we wanna be able to plug right into that so that it can be, uh, so we can help those on that entrepreneur journey through the ecosystems. I'm gonna share two little stories with you very quickly just to kind of have some fun. In one of our uh, early cohorts, we had a guy come in, typical entrepreneur story. You know, he had a thousand ideas and wasn't doing any of them. You know, he had a little bit of success with a couple, but you know, he kept getting uh, distracted by all the shiny new things out there. And so every time he saw something shiny and new, he'd go, oh, let's do that. And so what we did is we called him to kind of pick one and we worked through him to help him evaluate what, what would be the best one. And he picked one and kind of gave him a couple of clear steps in the next direction based on the model, like I talked about. And literally in three weeks, he ended up getting $50,000 of angel investment. He had a location, a mentor, and closed a bunch of purchase orders and started creating revenue within three weeks. Right? And so if we do this properly, we can really take a lot of the confusion and uh, uh, restraints off entrepreneurs and help them to become tractionable, investable businesses, right? That's what we're trying to do. And then the last one is just a quote 
from uh, one of the entrepreneurs I worked with. His quote is actually pages long. I tried to pull out just a couple things, but uh, this is what he said, you know, again, a guy with a great idea and lots of heart and lots of uh, charisma and uh, lots of eagerness to do things, but it was basically just an idea and he didn't know where to start, didn't know what to do, but we really showed him how to get in and create a, a business that becomes tractionable and investable. And so he's out, uh, has successfully raised funds, uh, made some prototypes, been launching out there and, and continues to grow, which is, is great. So that's basically it. That's me. Uh, that's where we are way up here in the great white north of Canada. And uh, you can reach out to me with uh, questions or concerns or thoughts. Uh, like I said, my whole passion is around building entrepreneurs and helping them to avoid needless failure. Uh, again, thank you for doing that great work out there. And if there's anything I can do to help and make the job easier for you working with entrepreneurs, we're very eager to help. Thank you so much, uh, Colin. Awesome presentation. Uh, I have to say that I, I haven't forced him to, to put our slides there. So, <laughs> so yes, thank you so much for, for, for this uh, presentation and for sharing your, your own experience with, with all of us. So let's give some more time for people to digest the, the presentation and to start dropping some questions for you. Uh, main, meanwhile, I, I, I also have at least a couple of, of them for you. So the, the, the first one is uh, when, when doing the assessment. So do you, do you have, or I would say that, are you working on any type of uh, intelligence that would suggest a specific action plans after the, the evaluation? That is a really good question. Uh, I mean, what we're doing right now is uh, relying on our own mentors and our own know-how, right? And so obviously in Fuse 42, we have a specific track that they're going to follow. Our, our assessments and our evaluation gives us a bit of a framework that we can kind of, again, triage or assess them and say, okay, this is what you need to do next, right? Uh, we don't have a, what would you call a, a kind of a, like a very specific framework. And I know there's some good ones out there. We just haven't adopted them yet. So my training program, or sorry, the mentoring framework is something that I'm, I'm trying to get them to walk through and allow them to um, allow the mentor to have better tools and better um, teaching tools to help those entrepreneurs. But we don't have a, a, a very specific program in that, and it's something I'd love to see. Yeah. Okay. Good. So we, we have one question. So how will you help? an ecosystem builder that doesn't have the experience or knowledge to help an entrepreneur. Sorry, what was the first part of that? How do I help? Yeah, so how will you help an ecosystem builder that doesn't have the experience or knowledge to help an entrepreneur? Well, again, so if they're actually trying to build the whole ecosystem, I'm gonna kind of leave that up to you guys to a degree, <laughs> okay? Uh, but but let's say it's really just simple okay let's say we walk into uh, an area where there is a number of a uh, number of service providers a number of people around you're just kind of gathering information and trying to put them together right so to me having the entrepreneur roadmap and what we do is we'll regionalize a site you know that's kind of very specific to to you and we're continuing to develop how we're going to do that completely we've got we've got it integrated into a couple of different places already but here's what we're we're looking at is we want to uh what we're doing is we're creating that front end that funnel for the entrepreneur to come into so if they want to help entrepreneurs in a sense almost what it is is either a ask them a bunch of quick questions to get to know them and then assign that homework so that google form uh, that i was showing on the mentoring thing that would help them get started but then eventually they're going to come to the point where they're going to need the tools, their training and some of the skills like that, which is kind of contained within the entrepreneur roadmap. But then you want to have those other ecosystem players, right? You want to have those other service providers because I only go so deep in teaching them about the market. Who's their customer? What's the problem they're trying to solve? How do they solve it? How do they figure out how, if it's a good problem? How do they talk to clients? You know, some of that basic stuff to get them going, but eventually they're going to have to get bigger marketing strategies, you know, better plans on how to do that. And they're gonna need more support and help. Then there's companies in each ecosystem, each 
country in each city in the world that can do that but you just want to plug them into that local ecosystem uh, through the entrepreneur roadmap that's kind of the way i would do it if that makes sense so i would work with the person who wants to build the ecosystem and help them try to figure some of that out and create this is just that plug in and then into the rest of the ecosystem which like i said you guys do very well yes yes i, ho I also have to say that uh, and this is a little bit of auto promotion <laughs> yes so we, we we also have like a really beautiful growth academy uh online course where you can learn everything around the startup journey so that would be like a, a good starting point for anyone looking at how to start getting involved more in the startup world so so that should be another another step but of course there, there are many tracks one of them can be also create your own venture to start getting deeper in that but yeah. it only depends on on, on you oh, okay good so uh i think that we have more more questions here so one of the attendees is asking if if he can utilize your services in south africa and if so how that should be good reply. probably the, the best place to start is to reach out and say hi honestly um you know uh, i've shared my contact information or you can reach me through through uh startup commons as well and we can have a discussion and, and see how it fits it's really going to come down to what do you have and what do you need and, and trying to figure out if there's uh, if we can make it fit. You know, I am getting calls from little ecosystems, whether it's even like a, like an accelerator, as an example. Uh, there's a group uh, that is working with hundreds of hundreds of women in the U.S. and they're reaching out and asking a, a ton of great questions and and want to plug people into this. And so they have their service providers already. They they know people and mentors that they're already working with. What I'm trying to do here is to just plug them into some basic framework to get the training that they work. So we're definitely able to adopt it and adapt it into a lot of the ecosystem. It just really comes down to how it might fit and what it is you're looking for to make it work. Yes, there is also another question. What is the business model for the entrepreneur roadmap? Uh, that is a great question, actually. And so currently, uh, as of today, and not for however long this is being broadcast for or uh, saved for, but it, it, right now it's free. It's completely free on the front end. Uh, we are, as we completely modify the technology behind it that runs it, uh, we're turning it into a subscription model, very lean subscription model. So for entrepreneurs, it might be like, you know, $4.90 or something. That's kind of our target price market. Something uh, uh, $4.90 a month. And uh, they can play around with it for 90 days to you know, get the feel of it, start creating their business models and, and, and their, their tools internally. And then hopefully as they start paying the $4.90, it's not too burdensome for them to do that. Um, uh, sorry, I, I just thought about something for a second. One thing I didn't mention, that I'm doing a lot of work in micro lending as well. So we've got a pilot project and an app being developed for micro lending and, and, and you know, for those like Kiva. So uh, entrepreneurs around the world can get the support and help they need, you know, little thousand dollar loans. The Entrepreneur Roadmap is part of that training program, right? So that's where that kind of plugs in as an example. Uh, but that, but it's free for them. They, they just get in and they get the loan and, and because they're going through that program, they get it for free, right? So sometimes I can create the models that would be free for the entrepreneurs in the ecosystem. And, you know, I, obviously I create some revenue from that as well. Uh, the other part would be to um, uh, the, the mentors would pay. So that's another monetization mo business model for the entrepreneur roadmap. But it's basically my version of how do I help the world be better entrepreneurs? <laughs> and I, I struggle with charging for it, but you know, I got to do something to make sure it's maintained at least. Uh, but uh, you know, so the model is mostly just a very low subscription model at this point. Yeah. So in that sense, we, we, we fully understand that the, the, your, your entrepreneur roadmap tool is an MVP for now. So in that sense, uh, what are your future plans? As I mentioned, uh, certainly turning it into, we've got some teams already starting to work on this um, and uh, we're making it into a, a more of an app. I mean, it would probably still be a web app because uh, we want people to access it. And there's also a lot of entrepreneurs around the world where they don't even have internet sometimes uh, very partial. So the app would be good for that to be able to store content and things like that. But it's basically turning it into something that you can do completely with your thumbs. The MVP version 
a lot of those tools are downloadable as Word documents and Excel sheets and PDFs. So it's a little bit clunky uh, that way if you're trying to do it on your phone, ever tried filling out an Excel sheet on your phone. <laughs> it doesn't work very well, right? So we're trying to get that into a, a suite of tools that is completely done uh, 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 on your thumbs. You can do it you know, in your bed or on the bus or wherever you want to, not driving. But uh, you know, definitely kind of getting around. And, and what about, and that is one, one question from my side, what about, uh, or what are you expecting from, from the ecosystem? So how, how do you see a collaboration with other actors within the ecosystem? Because for example, when, when I look at your online pool, it clearly, the first thing that comes to my mind is to, okay, let's try to track entrepreneurs going through your framework with those that are not following your framework. And then along the way, as, as they are moving through the different services, then we can compare who, who, who wins or who fails in that sense. So are you, are you looking at the ecosystem as a way to, okay, let's try to share more information with, with, with them so we can track how the users or how the entrepreneurs are, uh, are moving or are progressing along the way? Yes, I mean, and again, I, I kind of uh, hand that to you guys as one of the things that you do well is the metrics. Uh, we are not, you know, tracking that as deep as we could. Um, you know, we certainly track their progress and watch how they're doing and, you know, see what tools they're downloading and all that kind of stuff. But, uh, and I would love to find, uh, obviously, a comparison on how each of them, you know, grow and mature and whether they're getting more out of this one versus another one. These are things that are very, very important. Either the ecosystem has that or they don't, right? If they don't, I would suggest that they, they talk more to you guys because you're good at that. I would love to be able to build in, you know, uh, the proper plugins to be able to do that because the data is, is vital, not only for the ecosystem, but also for the entrepreneurs, also for the marketing to the entrepreneurs, and also for the governments around them that will help in, in, uh, uh, understand these and how to create programs. Uh, up here in Canada, we're part of a group called CANE, which is the Canadian Accelerators and Incubators Network, right, across Canada. And it's all the accelerators and incubators. And we have the fortune that the, the entrepreneur or the, the government is listening, right? The, the governments are creating policies and, and governance around those things because we're saying this is what we see we need, right? Yeah. And, and so we need that data. It's very important. So, so definitely one advice from your side for, for government would be around implementing a data-driven approach for ecosystem management. Yeah. Uh, yes. Sorry, I'm just writing, I, um, I'm writing two, or two website addresses in the, uh, in the panel here. I'm, I'm asking that because there is one question from the attendees uh, saying that many entrepreneurs, especially in Canada, believe that uh, government has a major role to play in the startup stimulus or in the funding landscape. Yes. So if, if that is not present, so what advice would you offer? And do you think it is a critical mechanism for startups? Uh, yes, I mean, there's a lot in that question. Yes, in Canada and probably a lot of, you know, relatively uh, developed world countries, um, the government is often fairly supportive of entrepreneurship, but even here, I mean, in Alberta, we have, you know, quite a conservative group and, and they, they've dropped, uh, unfortunately dropped a lot of the, the, the benefits and the, the, uh, the support that we need as entrepreneurs to get going, which kind of surprises me, but okay, that's, we, you don't get to choose what you, what cards you're handed, as they say, right? You can only choose how to play them. And so, um, what I'm trying to do is again, you know, I'm not talking so much from the ecosystem because I, the ecosystem has to have all those players, has to have the roles, has to have the language, has to have the metrics. These are not things that I'm super great at, right? Uh, I'm a networker and a connector and I, tr I always suggest as a mentor, let's call it a, me being a mentor, I suggest who they need to talk to next, the entrepreneur, right? who they need to talk to next. And that could be introductions to these ecosystems. So hopefully the ecosystem has some of that. I'm really coming at it from the entrepreneur's perspective and saying, okay, so I'm an entrepreneur, how do I, how do I figure out how to build business? 
because you don't know what you're going to be handed. You don't know if you have any support. You don't know if you, and when you need support, where do you go? Right. And so I'm coming at it from their perspective and say, you know what, go work on the tools, try a couple of these things, learn some of those basics, because if you can learn the basics, then you can do it over and over and over again. And whether the ecosystem is there to support you or not, we can't fix that. Hopefully it is. And like I said, thank you to every ecosystem out there because that's what we need. But if you don't have that, I'm trying to just give the entrepreneur the tools, the basic tools so that they can actually grow and figure it out on their own as best as possible. If they don't have anybody around them, they can start a business and figure out how to grow it with this tool, right? And, but then we plug them into, it's, it's made stronger, it's made more, you know, uh, uh, more beneficial by plugging into mentors and service providers and, and ecosystems and governments and tools that, and, and funding and all those things that kind of, kind of help support it. Eventually, we'd like to be able to get to where we have international, you know, supports and international pages of, of providers and, and work, you know, ecosystems that they can plug into. These are things that are dreams for me eventually, for sure. Great. So I think that we don't have more and more questions. So thanks a lot for, for all your replies, Colin. It was a real yeah. pleasure to having you today with us. I think that at least from my side, I have learned a lot about your journey and, and, and also how to uh, evaluate and assess startups and entrepreneurs along the way. Absolutely. I, there is one question in there. May I answer it? That I saw? Oh, yes, 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 of course. It, it actually just came in and it's a, a great question there. Uh, the question is, what part of the roadmap is most critical success for a startup? Yes. Also, can the roadmap help startups which are not digital? Uh, absolutely. <laughs> and this is actually one of the things. So when I go back to the idea of digital versus, oh, sorry, not digital, but uh, tractionable, investable businesses, you need both, right? Uh, uh, if you are an entrepreneur, you're going to invest your time and energy into the business. So it better be an investable one, <laughs> right? It, that's what I mean by investable. But if you build it and it is investable, then and you're willing to put your time and energy into it and you see it as valuable, then you can also attract other investors, financial, like your mom or your angel or your bank or your VC or whatever. Um, so, but tractionable is the, the key because a tractionable business can be investable, right? If I, I, years ago, I started a business that was basically just a Canadian distribution of a really cool product technology product it wasn't high it wasn't big and it wasn't amazing it's was just a distribution business but i was able to successfully sell it because i built it up and and built the channels for it and then i sold it right uh nothing spectacular but i moved on and it was a sale and so if i was interested in it and i got it to running so it was a good solid business then somebody else would be interested in it as well Okay, that's the framework. But tractionable just means that you have customers, that you know what you're doing, that you're moving forward like a tank moving through mud. You're just constantly trucking forward. And so this business, it's designed for anybody. It doesn't have to be a digital business. Uh, it is designed for the startup home at home solopreneur, just doing a, 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 even a network marketing business because you still need clients. You still need to know your finances. You still need to understand your plan, where you're trying to go. So it works for them as well. Um, for brand new entrepreneurs, I strongly suggest they start on step one uh, because it helps them figure out where they want to go. What are they trying to accomplish in their life? If they figure out that they want to be, you know, um, the next Bill Gates, okay, they got a big road ahead of them, right? But if they're just trying to create a little bit of extra money for groceries, then, you know, they can settle down a little bit and just figure out the, the modest plan that they need. So that's a good place to start if it's a brand new startup. But uh, each tool, uh, each area, which you can get through fairly quickly, is focused on a very specific area uh, to help them grow their marketing, their budgeting, their planning, their people, you know, things like that, right? All clear. So I think that we don't have more questions now. So well done, Colin. Thanks again for, for taking your time with us. It has been a pleasure. Thank you everyone for, for attending this webinar as, as we usually do. So we will circulate uh, the recording and also the materials, also in the materials. You will find contact details from, from Colin. So feel free to reach out for, 
for any potential opportunity to collaborate and, and, and to clarify anything. And we are, from a Startup common side, we are working more on organizing this type of webinar series. So stay tuned in that sense, because we are going to, to have another one next week. And uh, yeah, so also happy to, to, to hear uh, your ideas, your suggestions about what other topics we should bring to this type of uh, webinars. So thank you everyone. Uh, have a nice day. Stay safe and stay uh, as, as, as good as you can. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks as well, Oscar. I really appreciate it. Thank you to everyone. Thank you. Bye.